afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, our speaker will be telling you about hunting and its importance in conservation management. Many people here at Tech either hunt or at least have an opinion on it. Well, our speaker is a sophomore in wildlife conservation and is an avid outdoorsman who loves fishing and hunting. In fact, he began hunting when he was only eight years old, and now from every November to January, he uses dogs to hunt. Coming all the way from York County, Virginia, to present hunting and international affair, please welcome Mr. Kyle Taylor. Thank you very much, Jessica. All right, so real quick, I want to ask y'all a question to kind of get y'all's minds thinking. Um, just show a raise of hands here. How many people have ever eaten wild game that was uh, harvested from hunting, whether that's from a family member or yourself or something? All right, how many people here have hit a deer with their car? Or had a family member or a friend hit a deer with their car? All right, some more. How many people here have had deer or some type of other wildlife destroy their garden or flowers? All right. Well, you've all experienced the uh, effects of an ancient tradition called hunting. Okay, so, nearly a million years ago, humans emerged from their caves and would hunt various wild game in order to tame, obtain meat for nourishment. As you can see here, cave paintings from cavemen long ago depicting pictures of themselves hunting various wild game. As Andrea Thompson, a Georgia Tech graduate, points out, animal bones with cut marks on them have been found in caves in Israel, suggesting that butchers would be cutting up the deer or other wildlife. While modern humans still take part in the ancient act of pursuing wild game, some of the reasons have changed, and the public view upon it has changed as well. Since the domestication of animals and plants for large-scale consumption, hunting has become less of a necessity to get through our daily lives. With larger portions of the human population moving to cities and away from nature, many people have never even touched a bow or gun, much less actually hunted an animal. The reasons behind hunting have also changed. While some still hunt in order to obtain uh, food that is free-range and organic, Many do it to simply get back in touch with nature while taking an up-close and physical approach to the food chain. Nevertheless, hunting is still a major conservational management tool that is used worldwide in order to control wild game populations, raise money to help protect valuable and critical wildlife habitat, help boost economies, and even feed the less fortunate. During ancient times, Humans were not the only major predator on the food chain, but often competed with other animals for their prey. But now, in the 21st century, many areas in the U.S. lack major predators such as wolves, bears, and cougars. From the destruction of their habitat to overhunting without regulations, many of these important species have had their population levels decimated. That is not just an issue in the U.S., but as Elizabeth Weiss points out, it is an issue that has affected the lions and wildebeests of Africa and the whales of various oceans. And this causes, causes major ecological repercussions. For many of the prey species experience large population booms. Further problems can then occur, for these large prey populations can overgraze the landscape, causing a loss of biodiversity in the area, according to William Ripley. In cases such as the suburbs in the United States, large clusters of housing developments can shy away smaller predators that would generally prey on deer and rabbits, while still offering a large amount of nourishment, such as deer gardens and flowers. With little predators and a lot of food, these animal populations are then able to explode. In cases such as these, hunting could serve as a means of reducing the prey population. By using hunting to control prey populations, this could also help to reduce the spread of human to wildlife diseases, such as Lyme disease, while also reducing crop damage and the overgrazing of wildlife habitat, and then further lower wildlife-influenced vehicular accidents. In some instances, such as big game hunting in Africa, hunting individual animals can actually protect the populations. As the case of the Radio Lab guest speaker, Corey Knowlton, 
purchased a hunting license to hunt the black rhinos, in which officials and trackers had pre-selected an older male rhino for the hunter to harvest. When a male rhino exceeded its reproductive capacity and got older in age, they would often become more aggressive and kill younger males in fights and actually would uh, kill females by aggressively mating with them. By selecting these certain individuals, they were essentially protecting the other black rhinos. Across the globe, forests and grasslands are being cut down to be turned into croplands or being developed for human habitation. This leaves rest, less room for wildlife to inhabit, often causing unwanted wildlife interactions. To fix this, the United States, as well as other countries such as Africa, use revenue produced from hunting license to protect valued wildlife habitat. In Virginia, as well as many other states, majority of the money, upwards of 90% of the money produced from hunting license sales, goes towards funding the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries and protecting valuable habitat for both game and non-game species. This public land not only protects our wildlife, but also allows opportunities for the public to get out and experience nature through various activities such as hiking, biking, nature walking, hunting, and even fishing. As the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fishery points out, an act termed the Pittman-Robertson Act was an act put in place to put special tax on firearms, ammunition, and other hunting equipment. It then uses these revenues to further create and protect public land in the United States. In places such as Africa, as Radio Left points out, a hunting permit can cost anywhere from several hundred dollars to upwards of half a million dollars, depending on the local endangerment of the species. Such as in the case of Corey Knowlton in the Rhino Lab with the black rhino, many may argue that hunting of an endangered species is senseless. The reason behind it, though, is that the money generated by these expensive hunting licenses helps to protect land in Africa in the form of national refuges and helps to fund their government agencies that are responsible for protecting wildlife from poachers, which is actually a major problem in places such as Africa. When Knowlton purchased a hunting permit to hunt the endangered rhino, he paid $350,000 in hunting licenses alone. That was a great contribution that the refuge could then further use. Wherever hunting is occurring, revenue from hunters is also being generated into the local communities and larger corporations, helping to support many local and even government economies. According to the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, 2006, hunters spent nearly $480 million in hunting equipment and trips. The estimates are that hunting and fishing combined produces $128 million in local and state taxes, producing 24,000 jobs in Virginia alone. During hunting season, many gas stations and other small convenience stores experience a large boom in their revenue, with an influx of hungry customers helping to raise their profit levels. This does not just apply to states in the U.S., but also other countries as well, such as Canada. As Randy Shore tells, hunting from both residents and non-residents produces nearly $350 million for Canada every year. He also acknowledges the economic impacts that could occur without it. In many areas, the generosity of hunters can also lead to the supply of healthy wild game meat to organizations that help people of low economic income. One organization is termed Hunters for the Hungry, which is an organization in the United States that is operating in many chapters, in many states with chapters across the U.S. According to the Virginia chapter of Hunters for the Hungry, their chapter has been operating for 21 years, and in that time span, they have donated 22.2 million servings of venison alone to hungry families who needed the nourishment. Their process is rather simple. They encourage hunters to har legally harvest large game animals. After properly field dressing them and transporting them to their centers, they then butcher them and send them out to a convenience store, or not convenience stores, to um, collection centers, where then families may pick them up. From there, money donations can then further be used from the public to help pay for butchering fees. Another similar organization is the Maria 
de la Esperanza Mission in Argentina. This organization collects shot morning doves from the local shooting lodges and helps to feed ch hungry children, feeding nearly 1,500 children a day. The organization then asks for donations from hunters of the local lodges to help construct community centers and other necessities for the local poverty-stricken areas. Overall, hunting can be a crucial conservational tool both at a local and international level. It not only has strong effects in our hometown and states, but even benefits countries across the world. I gave examples of hunting in Africa and Argentina, but it occurs in places all over the world, such as New Zealand, Australia. And every place that hunting occurs it has many positive benefits for both the humans and wildlife inhabitants. These range from managing wild game population levels, which can help to reduce unwanted wildlife interactions and protect other species from overgrazing, and contributes money that helps to fund public land and agencies in charge of protecting and managing the land. Hunting can then also provide needed revenue to communities and governments, helping to boost the economy and even feed the homeless and needy. While hunting can have its negative consequences, it provides many benefits, both on the local and international level. That is why hunting is important to all of us. Every person here, as I said earlier, has somehow been affected by hunting, whether from a family or from a family or friend providing a meal harvested from hunting, hunters helping to boost your family's store, or even hunters controlling deer populations so that we don't hit a deer every time we go driving, saving us from those nasty insurance companies or protecting the farmer's crops from being totally destroyed. With hunting playing in such an important behind-the-scenes role in our lives, I encourage everyone to consider the positive influences that hunting has, and then further help the tradition in some way. That could be lending your knowledge on the importance of hunting on a heated Facebook debate, to even volunteering with organizations such as the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries or Hunters for the Hungry. One could even go one step further by even trying to go hunting with a friend to further understand the nature of hunting. Who knows, you may even enjoy it. But for me, that is why I see hunting as a necessary management tool that we need in the 21st century. Any questions? Thank you.